Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so I got an interesting message from a viewer. Now this viewer, uh, you all know, this is Danny, uh, AKA the Air King, AKA the AK. Um, he'll always be the Air King. Um, so uh, his comment or his question was, if I could choose my top two horological features, what would they be? And the way he phrased this, and he pointed this out, was that he didn't call them complications, he called them features. Um, when you think of complications, you, you often think of things like day, date, GMT function, chronograph, moon phase, that kind of thing. Um, but the reason he phrased it uh, as such is, is uh, He's allowing um, for things outside of uh, just what's attached to uh, a time-only movement, which is kind of how you conceptualize complications. So, so a feature could be the type of bracelet, whether it's got a metal bracelet, a, a, a rubber band, a leather strap. So, uh, so we, can, we can think in terms of uh, time, and how, what other features you want, be it a complication or uh, something, something else. All right, and so let's talk about it, my top two. Uh, first of all, let's just say that uh, we're starting off with the base of time, time only, and I'm gonna say that's a three-hand movement. Now, if you were to say that uh, the hour and the minute hand, uh, you'll give me that, but, but you won't grant me a, a second hand, then I'm gonna have to say one of those top two uh, choices would have to be a second hand. I, I love a second hand. I love, in fact, it's, it's really necessary for me because I really need to make sure the watch is, is running and going and, and I don't wanna have to keep listening to it and uh, that's kind of ironic because I just purchased a watch without a second hand but I use this uh, time indicator as a second hand um, because it's actually uh, safer for the watch uh, that's kind of another video and I'll, I'll make that but uh, as we speak I'm using it as a second hand so I know it's I know it's running I know it's ticking uh, it's all good um, but uh, that's an important feature for me, but I'm just going to assume that we're talking three-handed watches and, uh, and I don't have to use one of my choices for, for a second hand. So, um, I would say that my, my top two uh, important features, they're, they're re very related to one another. Um, metal bracelet and waterproof. And which is more important? Well, I would say waterproof is more important um, because when you're washing your hands and a big drop gets on the crown of a non-waterproof watch, you're in trouble. Uh, if it, if it uh, gets on, say, uh, your leather strap, not, not that big of a deal. You can wipe it off, not that big of a deal. But, um, so I would, say, I would say, let's just take these one at a time, waterproof, absolutely essential. Um, because, you know, if you're caught in the rain, it's important. Um, it's also integral if you wash your watches or you need to wash your watches. I mentioned having a child. I mentioned her touching me and my hands and my arms and my watch with, with greasy, yogurt-covered, chocolate-covered, uh, snot-covered hands. And I like to be able to wash my watch. That's really important to me. And when I store a watch for a couple weeks, I always like to give it a good wash. Just get it nice and clean, put on the white gloves, rub it down, and then store it. It just kind of makes me makes me uh, feel like it's, it's, it's been uh, reset in terms of cleanliness. And you can't do that with a non-waterproof watch. I couldn't bathe this watch. I had to be really uh, careful about the those those uh, buttons. And um, it is technically waterproof, but but again, this is an old watch. It's, it's decades old. So um, 
really think submerging it could be uh, a bad idea, so I didn't do it. And um, and if something gets on it, I can I can use a wet cloth, but but it's just it's just not as thorough as soaping up the entire case and and submerging it and rinsing it off. And and I love being able to do that. So uh, so I would have to say waterproof is number one. Number two choice, metal strap, metal bracelet, I should say. And that ties in with being able to wash the watch. Also, I think there's something more timeless about um, a metal bracelet. I just, I look at a metal bracelet as something that just lasts. It just, it just uh, lasts and lasts. Whereas leather bracelets seem, they seem temporary to me. And I wouldn't really want to wear another person's leather bracelet if I was borrowing somebody's watch. I really wouldn't want to, I, I wouldn't want to wear it. I'm, I, leather, did I say leather bracelet? Leather, leather, uh, leather straps. They, um, you know, they absorb oil and they, they absorb things and uh, stains can occur and you can't wash them. I mean, I guess you can, but that's strange and uh, that's a real, that's a real, uh, no, what do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah, it was something I won't, I won't tolerate. There's a word for it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna come, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. But um, that's something I, it, it's, uh, damn it, what's that word? What is that phrase? Anyway, it's just something I won't, I won't, I won't even consider. If I, if I see a, a piece and, and it's got a, a leather strap. Well, if, if there's a metal bracelet option, no brainer. I'm definitely going to go for the metal bracelet. But even if it doesn't have a metal bracelet option, I'm, I'm it's uh, it's a no go. Um, it's just uh, it turns me off immediately, almost. And and it could it it could be a, a waterproof watch. I know I I brought this up and Don Haynes weighed in and he said, well, you know, Patek Calatrava is there. They're, they're waterproof or water resistant to something, so you don't have to worry about washing your hands. And that's, that's true, that's fine. Uh, but it's got that leather strap, so I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't wash it, I couldn't wash it in the same way. Um, it's gonna get nasty after a couple of years. And you know, if you just think of it as, as something you need to replace, that's one thing. But um, um, I, 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 just, I just love being able to, to depend on my watches to to resist water and to be able to be washed and and so that's why those two uh, features are integral um, pretty much all of my watches are water proof kind of with the exception of this but it's technically uh, it, it was waterproof at one time and uh, they have metal bracelets so uh, so anyway that's that's my two features He's, he said he said Top two, possibly three. If I choose a third feature, what would it be? Um, it's a good question. Uh, now, let's just break and say that I think that a rotating bezel is a feature. I don't look at that as a complication because it's not attached to the movement. Um, would it be a rotating bezel? Possibly. They're really uh, they're really handy for timing. The date is also. Uh, a very handy feature. Uh, I love the GMT hand, but um, if, you're, if you have a GMT hand, you're gonna have the date. So if I choose the D GMT hand, I'm probably gonna get a date, but that's that's kind of cheating. I mean, you never have a, a GMT on a non-date watch. I guess you could. So uh, I, would, I would say that um, you had to go with the date. I'd go with the date over the, the um, rotating bezel because when it comes down to if you, if you need to time something, you just use your old-fashioned memory, okay, 42. And your short-term memory is, I think, good enough to, to deal with that. But, uh, but you're lost if, without the date. You're going to have to check on your phone, or, or if you don't have your phone, you're going to have to ask somebody. Um, so, uh, so I'd say the date would be my third function. In fact, I, you know, I could make a, a big uh, list of rating them from, from most important to least important. We'll just say uh, uh, number one and two. Uh, number one, waterproof. Um, number two, metal bracelet. Number three, date. Number four, rotating bezel. And, uh, and um, I'm assuming uh, it would be like a subtype bezel. 
Uh, number five would be the GMT uh, function. Um, number six. Number six would be a toss-up between the day and a chronograph function. And um, it's interesting because I've never been much of a chrono chronograph guy, but um, I, I love having a chronograph even though I don't really have a chronograph. The other day, I, I, I was telling my daughter she had five more minutes, and I was like, oh, I, I, I can time it. And then I realized uh, I, I don't have an actual uh, totalizer on here, and, and uh, I'd have to remember it. And I was like, yeah, screw it. Um, so uh, if you have a totalizer, I might, I might say the uh, chronograph function. Uh, but of course, you, if you have a totalizer, then it, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's not a minimalist, you know, uh, design. One totalizer is okay. That's not bad. But three, like a Daytona or a, a, a Speedy, I'm too much of a minimalist. I like a cleaner dial. Um, anyway, this is a great question. It's very interesting. So, so let me know. Features, complications. Uh, you get your three-hand. Uh, action with your, your watch, your three-hand uh, time function. What do you add to it? Uh, what's your one and your two? And if you want to tell me more, but, but I'd like to see what are, your, what are your features that are absolutely imperative to you. I'd like to know. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.